All right. Good afternoon, everybody. With us, my good friend and nursing his wounds from the Philadelphia Eagles loss. <laughs> Sorry about that. David Gregory from Philly. Dave, how you holding up? Is everything okay? The family okay? I'm okay. It was it was a rough couple of days after the game, but I think I'm I think I'm recovered at this point. So <laughs> there's, there's always next year. Yeah, <laughs> as they say. <laughs> we, we need we need a couple of uh, coaches, but I think we'll be okay. Mm. You guys will be just fine. Yeah. A, you have a rich first world problems in Philadelphia football. That's <laughs> for sure. Well, let's get right into it. So private REITs have been in the news. And no, by no means is this my area of expertise, but it is yours. So let's talk about private REITs. They've been in the headlines, a lot of investor redemptions. What's going on there? And is real estate still a good place to uh, to be invested? Yeah, I mean, they, you know, the, the, the big private REITs have you know, definitely been all over the headlines. Um, you know, it's not it's not a big surprise to us. It's it's actually something we've been talking to investors about, you know, probably over the last year or so. Um, so I think there's 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 really three things to pay attention to when it when it comes to these private REITs. Um, one is liquidity, and you know, I, I would say investors really just need to understand, you know, what the liquidity terms are, and they're they're different for each vehicle. Um, but in general, the private REITs will, you know, can lock up your capital for potentially a long period of time. Um, I think some investors are probably aware of that. I would venture to guess some are not. Um, and so, you know, it's just as far as how it's, how it's structured. I mean, anytime an investment vehicle owns a portfolio of illiquid assets like properties, I mean, the money should be, you know, should be locked up. So I don't have a problem with the way that it's structured, but it's really just a question of if, if investors understand the liquidity terms of, of the vehicle. Um, the second is valuation. So, you know, I think there's, there's a pretty good chance that a lot of these vehicles are overvalued because if you think about it, you know, you had, they had massive amounts of inflows, you know, prior to a couple months ago. And so, you know, they really, there was really no price discovery and, you know, it's, it's difficult to price, you know, properties and the liquid assets. And so you don't really get that price discovery until you have to go and actually sell assets. Mm -hmm. And so now we're starting to see outflows. And so you're, you're starting to actually get some price discovery. So I think, you know, I think from a valuation standpoint, you know, prices are, are probably poised to, to come down and, and come closer to what we saw in, in the public market for real estate securities. Um, and then the third thing is, is just fundamentals. You know, most most private REITs and and REIT funds in general, if you think about it, uh, you know, the, the main risk that they're taking is commercial real estate. Um, and we think, you know, we've talked about it before, but we think investors need to be, you know, really careful about commercial real estate uh, at this point for for two reasons. One is is really this, you know, systemic shift away for from the need of of office space, you know, retail space. You know, there's, there's also been a pretty big oversupply in, um, you know, things like warehouses and multifamily in some cities. Um, and then the second is really just the fact that interest rates are high. You know, they're, they're poised to stay high. And so what that means is cap rates or, or you know, rental yields are probably going to have to go higher. And, mm -hmm. you know, if, if a building owner doesn't have the ability to raise rents, which it's hard with the economy slowing down, then the value of the property has to go down to, to match to what that new you know, cap rate is. Mm. Um, so again, it's, it's liquidity, it's valuation, it's fundamentals. You know, I think from a liquidity standpoint, you know, personally, I would, I would rather not have my capital locked up for a longer period of time. Uh, from a valuation standpoint, I would rather invest in a fund that has transparency and pricing uh, and from a fundamental standpoint, you know, it, I think it's better to be invested in funds that have the ability to, you know, avoid a lot of these commercial real estate risks and be flexible, you know, find parts of the market that have better risk reward. Um, and I think there's plenty right now, there's plenty of opportunities, you know, that we see that are, that are really attractive in the real estate world. Um, they have a lot more to do with residential mortgages. Um, you know, mortgage servicers, mortgage REITs, uh, mortgage-backed securities in certain cases. Um, and so if you can find ways to, you know, to basically take advantage of, 
of strong fundamentals in that area of the market, you know, I think you'll be you'll be um, in a good position. So, well, give me one example right there. You talked about good fundamentals in the mortgage market for residential. Just highlight one thing you you see as an investor, as an investment professional. Like, where do you see that you really really like right there? Yeah, I mean, I, I think um, residential mortgage, non agency residential mortgage REITs um, are you know are a a pretty attractive area of the market because you've got, you know, these are these are REITs that own portfolios of mortgage loans and mortgage bonds, and you know if you believe in 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 the you know relative sort of stability in the housing market and mortgage credit, you can buy common shares of certain residential mortgage REITs at a 20, 25, you know, almost 30 percent discount to tangible book value, you know, with a dividend yield of you know, 10, 11, 12, 13%. Um, so you get good fundamentals, you get a really nice yield and you get a discount to book value um, that we think eventually will close in. I mean, a lot of these names typically trade at book value or pretty close to book value. Um, so you can kind of do the math on what the return potential is in this part of the market. And so that's yeah. that's one part of the market that we like better than you know any parts of the commercial real estate market. Oh, that's a good insight. All right. Well, let's wrap up on this section then and talk real. If you're, you had to do your 30 second ele elevator pitch on the private REIT, give us that 30 seconds. You said liquidity valuations fundamental, but how would you wrap that up to your, uh, your sister-in-law? Yeah. I mean, I think it's, I, I would, I would not recommend, you know, investing in private REITs at this point. I would look more towards daily liquid mutual funds or, you know, other, other private funds that have better liquidity. Um, that are able to be flexible, to, that avoid commercial real estate risks, that pay you a really nice yield, and you know have been doing it for a long time. So I, I think there's plenty of opportunities for you know in the real estate world right now. But but again, you know look more to the residential side of the equation, and there's there's plenty of ways to make money right now. Awesome. Hey, great wrap up. Thanks, Dave. As always, good yep. luck on those bumps and bruises from the game. And uh, we'll talk to you again soon. See you, everyone. Thanks, All right, thanks so John. much, yep. Dave. Have a good one. Bye-bye.